class, title block, and also working on lettering a little bit. So here is an eight and a half by 11 size sheet of vellum. Um, you can also use your sketch paper and just trim it down to kind of a normal paper sheet size. And vellum, we, we tend to draw by hand on vellum um, because it's a little bit tougher than sketch paper. Um, if we're doing a more formal assignment, like a like a one of our projects in class, because it it will photocopy better when you take it to a print shop. So for tonight, I'm going to draw on vellum, but again, you could just as easily draw on sketch paper. And I have a little map board set up. Hopefully, at this point, you've got some place to do some drafting. And I'm going to set my paper up and uh, you know, try and get it lined up. If you have a T-bar or a parallel bar um, that is stable on the surface, you're gonna wanna set that piece up. And then I like to just rest my piece of paper right on the base of that. And then I tape the top and the bottom of my paper down. So that my paper is always parallel to the, to the parallel assisting device. In my case, I have one of the rolling gliders, which isn't the most stable parallel surface to draw on, but it's what I've got at home. So we're gonna work with it. So I am taping down my, this will be my title block in, at the end of this little quick tutorial. I'm just grabbing the corners of it. And you'll notice I gave you a printout in the uh, module assignments that talks a little bit about title blocks and, and what the typical um, offsets are around the perimeter of the paper. And that's our really area that doesn't usually print on a set of plans, or maybe it would have binding. And so we don't wanna get the edge of our drawing too close because it get, could, could get punched by the binding. So when we draft a title block, we always keep the left side edge as the binding edge as three quarters of an inch on this side. So in this, in this scenario, because that's what works best for this camera, I have my paper um, taped down in what we call landscape view. So that's when you have your paper um, with the longer side pointed to the, to the bottom and the shorter side pointing up. We call that landscape. Like if you were painting a landscape, you would probably orient your canvas this way. And if we rotated our paper this way, where now the short sides on the bottom and the longer sides are, are right and left, we would say that's in portrait. So when you do a title block, it doesn't matter if it's in portrait or landscape, we always focus on having the binding edge, the left-hand side, um, be on the left side, because that's how we read in the United States. So I'm gonna take my architectural scale, and on the 16 blade, that is the same as a schoolhouse ruler that we all grew up with. And so I'm going to mark first my binding edge. I'm just gonna get some small guideline marks. I'm gonna use red, so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit more than the blue. But I'm gonna put three quarters of an inch marks in a few locations along this edge. And then I will go ahead and I will draw in the first side of my title block boundary. I'm going to use my little rolling glider. And I'm going to use a fairly heavy pen. I like to use a sign pen for this part. And I'm going to carry it all the way, almost all the way to the bottom and the top and draw my first binding edge line at three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to mark the other three sides as half inch from the edge. We don't need to go quite as far because we don't bind these edges. I'm just gonna mark half inch, few, a few guidelines, two marks that are measured, and then I can use my straight edge to fill that line in. Going around the paper. Again, just doing a couple little marks so I can set up my parallel paper up here. Keyboard's getting in the way a little bit. 
it. And if you have older eyes, I know there's a few people who are um, kind of focused on other professions. You're, I found that a, a set of reading glasses really goes a long way, just kind of the cheap ones that you would buy at the drugstore. So if you're feeling like your eyes are tired um, when you're doing some of this work, go ahead and pick up a pair of cheap readers. You can see on this particular corner, there's a little bit of a crisscross. And in traditional drafting, that's actually desirable um, to have a little positive connection like that. Um, so that was actually taught to do that back in the day. Um, up to you whether you want to um, actually make a cross or be perfectionistic and get right to the edge. You'll get a feel for what works for you. So now you can see I've got my paper, I've got my binding edge on the left side, and then a half inch boundary all the way around. So then the next thing I have to figure on my title block is where I'm going to list my name and the assignment and the date. And so a lot of times when I'm in landscape, I might put what's called the title block on this side, but you could certainly put it down at the bottom too. Um, if it's in portrait, I usually put it at the bottom but it's up to you. I'm not as picky about how deep this is. I mean, certainly don't make it half the paper. Um, it kind of is proportional. You get a sense of how it looks in proportion to um, the size paper that you're working on. Obviously, if you're working on 24 by 36 inch paper, this would be a lot bigger of a title block. So I'm just gonna grab something like that. That's about three quarters of an inch if I had to guess. But you can kind of make it whatever size within reason that you like. And then I'm just going to put a few dividers down here. And again, I'm not measuring. I'm not real critical on if these, how many inches these are. I'm just splitting it into a few places like that. So then I have now my title block. Again, Three quarters of an inch on the binding side, whether that's in landscape or portrait, half an inch on all other sides, and then create your little title block where you're actually label things. So now I'm ready to work on my lettering assignment. So there'll be a couple of videos um, that I think you'll find really helpful and some handouts. I would read through those before you start. Um, and then uh, one thing that I like to do the video is going to show you how to use a lettering guide to set up your guidelines, but I'm a big fan of grid paper. So I have some quarter inch grid paper here. This one is not printed very heavily. This one is printed more heavily, but it has water stain on it. Um, but I will go ahead and use this because I think you might be able to see it better on the camera. But every one of these grids on this particular grid paper is a quarter of an inch. Now, grid paper comes in all different sizes. Here's a sample of grid that's, that's 3 sixteenths of an inch. There's eight inch grid paper. So um, it's just a nice way to not have to draw all the guidelines. But if I wanted to, I could certainly draw guidelines. So I can put my vellum right over the top of my grid paper. And then I got the ready-made grid ready to go for lettering. And I'll show you a few different strategies with lettering. Um, and, and with landscape architects, we tend to be a little bit creative with our lettering. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there, it, you know, the, for me, I can see the grid coming right through it. The resolution isn't quite as good as I'd like on my screen, but I suspect once it transforms to a video, you might be able to see it a little bit better. So now I can use this grid paper behind as my guideline. And so I'm going to get one of my smaller pens. Um, I like to use the stylus or the eraser point. 
um, um, size of pen for lettering, unless I'm doing a big title lettering. And I'm going to show you um, quarter inch lettering. So I'm going to do every other line. And, and I really, if you want to practice the different letters of the alphabet, that's fine. But for your letter assignment, I want you to work on um, full words. So when we do lettering, um, we, we actually, I'm going to step back for a minute. I'm going to show you a couple strategies on how to give your lettering a little bit of flair before we get to the actual lettering assignment. So I'm just gonna kind of do this as a rough practice for you guys, um, just to show you one easy way to kind of make your lettering a little bit more um, give it a little bit of flair because in landscape architecture we tend to have lettering that that's a little bit more interesting than some other disciplines like engineering they might actually even use stencils but it looks a bit dry and harsh so i'm going to show you a few ways to give your lettering some flair um, i like the guy who does the video i find his lettering style he has a bit more flair than I like personally because I find he leaves openings in the letters uh, for create kind of a creative expression but I find it makes it a little bit hard for me to read so see what you guys think so I've kind of set up a few guidelines on this that I can't see real well on the screen so I'm going to go back and do them in pen You can see them a little bit better. I'm just going to show you some ways to give your lettering some quick and easy flair that you can play with while you're working on this assignment. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a middle line that if you guys remember when you had lettering worksheets when you were maybe a child in school um, that kind of balanced your letters. And so if I, I found that if I play with that center line and follow suit with the letters, then I, it's a very easy way to give my lettering some flair. So this one is completely centered and balanced. I'm going to use a thicker pen so you guys can see it a little bit better. And here I'm just going to practice with some alphabet letters. But you can see it's kind of balanced right in the middle. And the goal with lettering is to try and have your verticals be very straight. I'm out of practice. So the way, if you're, as you're learning, you could use a small triangle um, to kind of keep that vertical and hold that line straight. That is one thing that you'll be graded on is how straight your verticals are. And then, you know, the consistency of the lettering size. You can see now that I'm using a straight edge, it's a lot, you know, a little bit neater. You can kind of get a sense of how that lettering is looking. Now, if I go where I've taken that center line and I've nudged it to the upper third and I follow suit with my letters, um, you might see something that looks like this. Okay, so you get the sense of just a slight nuance to those letters. And the same, I can also bring that line to the lower third, and it changes the appearance of those a bit more. I have a harder time with this one. 
So just some quick ways for you to kind of play with the letters as you're, you're learning architectural style letters. Right. So quick overview of, of I've given you a sample alphabet um, in one architectural style. There's one from the book. We want to be focusing on capital letters, and I want you to focus on writing words. And so you can either draw guidelines every quarter of an inch. I could use a ruler if I didn't have any grid paper. And what I would do is say, okay, every quarter of an inch. I'm going to mark it. Right? And then I could do guidelines like this. And it's nice to make the guidelines in kind of that non-photo blue or light pencil. I'm not going to do that because then you won't be able to see it on the demo. So I'm drawing guidelines in pen so that you might have a chance of seeing them. Alternatively, you can have, if you have a piece of quarter inch grid paper underneath, that's, that's really what I, I use as guidelines when I can. So now every other line, I'm going to uh, practice writing words. Um, if you're in Plant ID, uh, this is a really great way to practice learning your plants. And you'll notice that when I get to a break in the words, I leave about enough room for one letter to, to fit within there. That's about a comfortable um, spacing so that it gives your eye a cue of where one word stops and the next word starts. If you have a favorite song, you could write the lyrics or a favorite poem. Or if you want to vent your frustration on your teacher making you do writing because your hand is getting a cramp, that's fine too. So um, what I want you to do is, you know, at every quarter of an inch, you'll have a space between it, so not every line. You're going to fill this whole page with words, not alphabet, um, but different words. So I will be looking for consistency in lettering, how nice and straight those verticals are, um, and spacing between the words. And that's what you'll be graded on tonight. Okay, so a little intro on title blocks and lettering, and I hope that helps make this remote learning go a little bit easier for you all.